What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman, and I am a happy man today because we got some positive injury news around that guy right there, Lonzo Ball. He could be coming back soon, and a bunch of members of the Bulls front office fully expect him to be back next season. We'll dive into that quote from Casey Johnson here in a second. But guys, we are five subscribers away from 6K here on the channel. First off, just thank you guys so much for the support you guys show me every single video. I really do appreciate it. And shout out to all 5,955 or 95 of you guys who have already hit that sub button. But if you guys haven't already, want to help me out and hit that sub button, maybe you guys could be the 6,000th subscriber here on the Bulls Report. Let's dive into what Casey Johnson had to say. This is a longer quote, so stay with me. But he was asked about Lonzo Ball in a mailbag, and I thought everything he said was worth noting. He says, there's growing buzz from some who talk to Ball that he'll play next season. Love to hear it. Also, as stated in the last answer, that optimism needs to be measured against the fact that he hasn't started taking contact or playing five on five. Everyone associated with the Bulls is rooting for Ball, and the Bulls have to give him one more chance unless they trade him and there was little interest in his contract when it was included in some preliminary talks leading up to the trade deadline. That was a key part, mostly as part of larger packages. I thought it was interesting that he said that some teams were calling about Lonzo, but he carried on to say this. Since Ball is almost guaranteed to pick up his player op option, if he can play and the Bulls don't trade him, he'll be on the Bulls since their only way out would be to have an independent panel of doctors deem Ball's injury career ending. So a little concerning at the last half of that quote, but overall, I'm a happy man with what we heard from Casey Johnson right there. I thought it was actually very interesting that he said teams are calling about Lonzo Ball in a potential trade package for a big, big time deal. And it just still, my head just starts to really start turning here. It's like, what trade offers did the Bulls have at the deadline where they fully said we are standing pat for a three, or third trade deadline in a row. They did not make a move. But overall, I'm happy for Lonzo Ball. I think he's just slowly working his way back. We saw videos of him dunking the other day, which is obviously great news for him and just you know where he's at athletically. But I also thought Casey Johnson wrapped it up pretty well, talking about you know what Lonzo Ball could be coming back from injury, and I thought it was interesting. He said, I believe that Lonzo can be a rotational NBA player again when I see it. It seems highly unlikely for anyone to come back from a two-and-a-half-year absence after a rare ligament transplant surgery and then contribute at a high level again. With his salary on the books and no market-slash-realistic mechanism to move Zach Levine, management is going to be unable to bring back DeMar and Pat or make any real investment in fixing any of the other wing or center depth returns or concerns. So listen, I fully, you know, really do believe that Lonzo Ball can get back to his old self. You know, that guy who, you know, was filling up the stat sheet in that first season here in Chicago. But I think his game's gonna have to change. I don't think it's gonna be the same, you know, up and down the floor Lonzo Ball. He's gonna have to use the IQ part of his game. He's gonna have to be more intelligent than other players. And he does have that ability because what I love so much about Lonzo is he was just a winning player at his core. He plays basketball the right way. He's always the guy that's making the extra pass, who's diving on the floor for loose ball. And he doesn't necessarily care about his own stats. He cares about the wins and loss column. So even though, yes, he's going to lose a ton of that athletic ability that led him to have a great year in 2021, I still think he can you know, change his game a little bit. And maybe he can't put up the production he did in these 35 games of averaging 13 you know, five rebounds and five assists, but what if he can be, you know, a nine, five, five guy or a, you know, a eight, seven and six guy with still given elite defense on that side of the floor, which is also another part of his game, which, you know, I'll talk about here in a second that may take a, you know, a huge step back, but the shooting that's going to be with Lonzo, you know, he shot 42.3% from downtown. So, you know, it's just credit to him and his work ethic coming out of UCLA. And overall, he was special that year. Like, I understand it's been a very long time. He's coming off these major surgeries. But we forgot that, like, Lonzo, he was the third best player on that Bulls team. That was the top of the Eastern Conference. He had uh, DeMar DeRozan top five in MVP polls before he got hurt. I mean, DeMar was averaging damn near 28-5-5. and five. A big reason of that was Lonzo Ball getting him in his spots and, you know, really helping him just get the most out of his game. So I really think Lonzo has a chance to get back to his old self. It just may look differently than what we were used to seeing here in Chicago. But I'll get you guys involved on today's show. Can Lonzo Ball return to his old self? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no down in the comment section. I'll make this the pinned comment on today's video. So let your thoughts be heard down in the comment section. Maybe you guys spark a little debate down there. Love to see what you guys have to say. 
Coming up next year on the show, we're going to be talking about the Bulls' chances to make the playoffs because I think it's just more and more likely as I'm starting to look at these matchups that we are potentially going to see a Chicago-Boston round one matchup. But first, I do want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, and that is Factor. If you guys head to factormeals.com slash bullschat50 and use promo code bullschat50, we'll hook you guys up with 50 percent off they have pancakes smoothies and more discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast midday bites and more it's no prep no mess meals factor meals are ready to heat and eat so there's no prepping cooking or cleanup needed it's also flexible for your schedule get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week plus you can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium op options with no cooking required. Sign up and save. We've done the math here. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal, every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash bullschat50, and if you use promo code bullschat50, you guys will get 50% off. That's code bullschat50 at factormeals.com slash bullschat50 to get 50% off. A little hot take to start off the second half of today's show. I, I am fully confident that the Chicago, Chicago Bulls will be taking on the Boston Celtics in round one of the playoffs. And I actually, I'm not saying the Bulls will win that series. There is actually, you know, a no, 0%, no, I'll give them a 1% chance to win that series because the Bulls are one of the best clutch teams in the NBA. And if the games are close down the stretch, I'm going to say this right now, I'd rather the ball in DeMar DeRozan's hands than Jason Tatum's. DeMar, he is the most clutch player in the NBA this season, hence why he's minus 200 to win that award. So I really do believe the Bulls will be taking on Boston round one of the playoffs. And, you know, Bulls are going to have to start off with beating the Atlanta Hawks. Um, that's probably going to be the 9-10 matchup. You know, there's a lot of games in between, you know, the 8 to the 9 seed and then the 10 to 11 seed. So I think that's going to be the first game. And then obviously we know Caruso, Ayo DeSumo, they have done a number on Trey Young in the past. Trey Young's really struggled against Chicago. I think he's only won like one game out of like nine chances or whatever that stat is. But, you know, overall, the Bulls have just gotten the best from them. And then let's just say they get the Pacers in that little 9 to, or that'll be the 9-8 matchup in order to get into the playoffs. I'd honestly like the Bulls' chances. I mean, we were just watching a couple weeks ago. The Bulls take on Indiana in Indiana, and DeMar DeRozan killed them. And we also know Tyrese Halliburton has struggled up lately. As this game is just slowing down and the refs are kind of holding on to their whistle a little more, and the more physical brand of basketball is being seen, you know, really, you know, winning at the highest level, I think that favors the Bulls because Alex Crusoe, Ayo DeSumo, these really physical players, I think can really get the best of Tyrese Halliburton. And that's why I got the Indiana Pacers as my number one team on who I want to play in the play-in tournament. I think the Bulls would have the best chance of beating Indiana, and I would really, you know, I would hammer the Bulls. I'd put a lot of money on that. But then number two for me would also be the Miami Heat. I think, you know, I would still pick the Heat to win this game just because of what Eric Spoelstra and Jimmy Butler have done. You know, just giving respect to those guys. But, you know, I think the Bulls would have a chance because they were up by four with two minutes left last season in order to get in the playoffs. And also I got the 76ers. Assuming Embiid's back, you know, I just think he's such a problem. He has dominated the Bulls in years past. But, you know, my take on all this, because I think there is a camp that says, you know, I don't want the Bulls to get in the playoffs because they would just beat or they would just lose to the Celtics in either four or five games, and I would want them to get a lottery pick. Yes, I understand that, but it would also be great for these young bucks to get great playoff experience. I mean, Kobe White and Ayo DeSumo, what they've done in the second half of the season has been no short of special. And, you know, I would love to see them in a playoff atmosphere because I want to see if Kobe White, if his offensive game can translate to the playoffs. You know, the Celtics have great point of attack defenders in Drew Holiday and Derek White, but I would like to see how Kobe White would kind of manufacture that matchup and see if he can continue averaging 21 points a game. And then also from Ayo DeSumo, I want to see if he can continue the shooting, you know, hot streak. He's on and shoot 43%. Damn near from downtown. So, yes, I would like the lottery pick, but I would also like to see White and DeSumo definitely get those playoff reps. And I wish Patrick Williams was healthy because if he was healthy, you know, I, I would almost lock the Bulls into making the playoffs because that 3 and D wing, it's like literally exactly what the Bulls need right now. And just seeing him just get those reps, it would be awesome. But, you know, obviously it's sad that he's not going to be here. But, you know, I think Kobe White and Isle, it would be great for them to get those, you know, obviously playoff reps. But let me know, what is your confidence level in the Bulls making the playoffs? I'm going to scale my confidence at a, probably a 7.5. I give the Bulls a 75% chance right now, way higher than probably most people to make the playoffs. But let me know, 1 through 10 confidence level in Chicago making the offs. And if we get any more injury updates around Lonzo, Kobe White, obviously, and then Alex Cruz, so I'll have a video for you guys ASAP. So hit that sub button. We're less than five away from 6K. I would really appreciate it. But thank you guys so much for watching. As always, go Bulls.